And let's speak more about this story now with Mike Turner, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee, a Republican congressman from Ohio. Chairman Turner, great to have you back on BBC News. I want, to start, so I want to start with what President Biden said today, that he has decided what the response will be. What do you think we can expect to see? Well, as Sumi, as you were saying, we're all mourning the loss of our three service members, and certainly all roads of responsibility lead back to Iran. If you look at what occurred on October 7th in Israel, um, Hezbollah, Hamas, um, the, um, the Houthis and the, the, the attacks that are occurring in the Red Sea, I think everyone understands that um, these emanate from um, an Iran that is coming even more aggressive uh, every day. These attacks need to be responded to. Iran needs to know that there's going to be a price. Uh, the president has made it clear that these attacks will result in Iran understanding that there there will be a response and there will be a price. Um, these acts of instability that are occurring in the Middle East uh, are all part of Iran's efforts mm. to support uh, terrorist groups and organizations and attack our allies and certainly Western interests. Chairman, I want to talk about what that response could look like. The National Security Council spokesperson, John Kirby, said the U.S. might take a tiered approach, so not just a single action, but, quote, potentially multiple actions over a period of time. Does that mean, in your view, that the U.S. might be engaging in what could become a drawn-out conflict? Well, I think that the uh, provocation here is Iran and what they're doing in both uh, providing weapons and training and funding for these groups uh, throughout the Middle East. They're, they are the source of the instability. I was briefed today by the Director of National Intelligence and our uh, Director of the CIA, and also met with Secretary General Stoltenberg for NATO. And he, the Secretary General for NATO, indicated that he understands that this is you know, an, an attack upon the West, and certainly uh, it's affecting commerce, it's affecting our allies, it's affect, affecting people's lives that we've seen here in the United States, uh, and certainly as they've uh, experienced in, in Israel. This needs to be responded in a way where they understand uh, that we're not going to just continue to play defensive. There's been over 160 attacks on American troops uh, during this, this period of time. This is the first that has resulted in, in casualties. We're not going to allow that happen again without Iran understanding that this is a conflict that is going to come on their doorstep. I want to ask you more about what your view is on what the response should be. We spoke to two of your colleagues in Congress yesterday on that question. A Congressman Seth Moulton mentioned the possibility of carrying out attacks on a specific high-level terrorist leaders. We also spoke to Congressman Don Bacon, who said things like a Iranian oil terminals where we could shut down the export or of their energy or also some Navy targets on the coastline. What do you think of those approaches as a possible response? Do you think that would be a deterrent enough? I think, as soon as you just pointed out, I think all of these are on the table with the administration as they're looking at solidifying what these targets are. But I think what's really important that you just stated earlier is the administration is saying this is not going to be a one-off. It's not as if Iran is going to have one response from the United States. This is going to be uh, perhaps over a period of time where they're going to see uh, that their activities are going to, to come at a cost uh, and that they would know that the United States is going to be continually engaged as, uh, as Iran has become a, that destabilizing factor in the region. If this is not going to be a one-off, Chairman, are you concerned about the prospect of the U.S. indeed getting pulled into a, a wider regional conflict? I think it's already a wider regional conflict. I think what's going to occur with our response is an understanding that Iran is not going to get uh, free shots. Um, and that, uh, you know, although the administration has been slow, 160 attacks so far on American troops to respond to them, uh, that uh, you know, this resulting in, in, in deaths to American service members has changed the dynamics. And this administration is going to be responding. Do you think the administration should then strike um, entities of the Iranian government? Well, I think one target that, that needs to be held at risk here is the uh, the weapons production uh, machine in, in Iran. As you know, we're seeing Iranian weapons on the battlefield in Europe, in Ukraine, uh, where Russia is deploying them. Uh, you see that Saudi Arabia has been attacked. You see, you know, the uh, Houthis holding uh, targets and hitting targets in, in the Red Sea that's affecting commerce. You have all of these areas where Iran has not just been funding and training, they've been supplying weapons, and I think there's certainly their weapons industry needs to be held at risk. We have, Congressman uh, Chairman, has seen, of course, the, uh, these attacks on Houthi weapons facilities. Um, that hasn't seemed to deter the Houthis in carrying out further strikes. Are you confident that such a response would successfully deter any future attacks by any Iran-backed militias? 
Well, the issue is not just to deter, it's also to lessen their overall capabilities. The attacks on the Houthis, for example, um, they have you know, some uh, weapons production capabilities in addition to receiving arms from Iran. So it's an attempt to take out those, the, the, those capabilities, certainly in Iran. I think those capabilities, especially their exporting of the weapons that they're making uh, in Iran need to be held at risk. I do want to ask you as well about another question. There's a movement on a possible deal for a ceasefire in Gaza. We understand that the Secretary of State will be visiting the region once again. Uh, what role do you think, Chairman, that the U.S. can play in pushing to get a stop in fighting, to have hostages released, and also to get aid in to civilians in da Gaza where it's direly needed? Right, so Director Burns, of the director of the CIA, was in front of my committee today, giving us a briefing on the status of these negotiations. He is conducting those negotiations, um, and he gave us a very optimistic view um, that these negotiations could result in both meaningful ceasefire um, and uh, return of hostages, uh, also hopefully continuing the lessening of Hamas's ability to operate uh, both uh, as a terrorist organization and within Gaza and get that, as you just said, Sumi, uh, that needed humanitarian aid into the, uh, the Palestinians in Gaza. Uh, Chairman, one more question on that. We know that both sides, Israelis and Hamas militants, have also said that they will not give in on certain demands. Did the uh, briefing that you heard say anything about the possibility of this being close? Well, I, I don't want to make any predictions here, but I can tell you that I, I have a great confidence in uh, CIA Director Burns' um, negotiating skills, and you know, he's been diligently working uh, to try to bring the sides together and at the same time uh, result in the release of, of the hostages, and that's certainly high on his priority. Chairman Turner, it's always great to have you on BBC News. Thank, Thank you, you so much.